Oliverio Pignani created the Eco Guitar brand in the year 1959, and over the next 20 years or so, they dominated the European market. Let's check one out. This guitar right here is an Eco Ranger 12 string guitar from the early 1970s. Now, before we talk about it, let's hear how it sounds. everybody, Lucas Hanneman here. Welcome to this week's episode of Guitar Tone Tuesday. An episode that truly represents a big part of what this channel is all about. Showcasing obscure guitar brands to you guys. Helping you guys learn something about something that you might not know about already. So, if you're new to the channel, and if you like that kind of stuff, please do like, share, and subscribe. Okay, so the Eco guitar brand, as I say, was created in the year 1959 in Italy by Oliviero Pignani. Now, I really hope I'm pronouncing that properly because my Italian, even though I've got Italian blood, my Italian is not very good. Um, that being said, Oliviero created this brand um, initially to basically bring acoustic guitars and archtop guitars that represented Sicilian culture uh, into the guitar market. And over time, he wanted to develop production techniques that would make it so he could bring his guitars to the everyday guitar player, like you and me. He didn't want to make expensive guitars. He wanted to make them fairly cheaply, but still guitars that would hold up. And that's what these guitars are. They're good guitars. Um, the interesting thing was... In the years past, after 1959, things changed a fair bit. The British in invasion hit, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles really took over the world. And Levero wanted to make sure that he brought his guitars to as many markets as possible. He wanted to make sure that he stayed current. Um, so they even began to make electric guitars and organs over there at Eco. For quite a while, they were even manufacturing Vox guitars. So that's pretty interesting. Basically, it was a big facility, and they manufactured a few different brands uh, there in Italy, as well as the Eco brand. And they also sold these guitars to different areas of the world under different names. But they do have some clout. Um, I will say that I've seen pictures and heard about Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Mike Rutherford from Genesis, as well as Jimmy Rafferty playing these guitars. So I could just imagine like a young Jimmy Page maybe working out, you know. <laughs> sounding guitar you know and I would say that in trying to make these guitars at a good price point Eco certainly took a couple cost-cutting measures that make the guitars sit well in a mix maybe not necessarily by themselves but in a mix this guitar would sound amazing and why is that well as far as I can see online it's all plywood construction and that's not a bad thing again when it comes to frequencies um, now, 
sometimes 12 string guitars, especially at this size, pretty large guitar, they can be pretty boomy, right? Now, this guitar, from what I can see, has a laminate Sitka spruce top, and that would actually uh, jive with the color here. It's kind of got this orangey, uh, you know, nice kind of old, you know, looks like old wood. Um, so kind of an orangey type color there on the top. And the back and sides, again, I'm not sure about this. Maybe you guys can let me know. I believe this is mahogany, and I'm pretty sure laminate mahogany. Now, if we look at the back of this guitar, here's something interesting. A bolt on neck. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, not too many acoustic guitars made with a bolt on neck like this. Sometimes they bolt on from over here, but they still have a neck heel. But this is a true bolt on neck, like a Stratocaster or a Telecaster. <laughs> um, so that's very interesting. Um, and again, I think that's to keep the cost at a reasonable level. These guitars were attainable by most people uh, at that time. Um, I've seen these go for anything between, at the very low end, like $300, but I've seen them go for as high as like $1,100 uh, in Canada. And it's because of the clout, I think, of those artists who had them and who were in Europe at that time. Um, you know, it's it's got a very thick polyester finish. So certainly guitar making has come a long way since these days, right? Uh, adjustable bridge, definitely a product of its time, of the, the early 1970s. Uh, and then this tailpiece too, you know? Something that you saw on some Gibson guitars of the time was an adjustable bridge like this. So very interesting. Now let's, let's hear it in a bit more of an upbeat kind of context. So here we go. something more kind of rock and roll. So eventually, Oliviero passed away um, in the late 60s, actually. So the company continued on, and they made these Ranger guitars, which eventually kind of became their staple, the Ranger guitars and other sim similar acoustic guitars. The Japanese market and the, Im the import market eventually kind of took over, and there were really, really great guitars being made in Japan in particular, you know, companies like Dayon, uh, Yamaki, uh, Mountain, lots of these companies were making solid wood guitars in the mid 1970s, uh, or even early 1970s. And so uh, eventually, the eco brand found it hard to compete. So the brand kind of petered out. And eventually they were revived in, I believe, the mid 80s. Um, uh, and the interesting thing about that was that uh, his brother purchased the company. So the Eco brand is still going today. And I think, uh, you know, these guitars are still being manufactured now. Uh, they're, they're, I should say they were reintroduced, like these Ranger series guitars. But they're not quite as good as the old ones. And that seems to be the word on the street, that people think that they're good, the new ones are okay, but they're not quite the same as they used to be. So, Oliverio, thank you so much for making 
really interesting, kind of obscure old guitars. It gave me something interesting to talk about this week. So I really appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate uh, my friend Eric who lent me this guitar to make this video. It's really, really nice. And it's nice to talk about something that's not so common. So please let me know in the comment section below. Do you guys know about eco guitars? Have you guys tried an old eco ranger like this? Um, I'd be really fascinated to know what your opinion on this old guitar is. So I'll leave you guys on that. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We will see everybody again next Tuesday. Yeah.